This is the Fantasy Road Show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of the Fantasy Road Show with your boys here. My name is Truck, and I'm joined as always by Shane O'Mac. And today we're talking red light, green light, week three, start sits, guys we like, guys we don't like. Ready to get into it, Shane? How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing good. Uh, I just sacrificed my own well-being for my family right before we stepped in to record. Oh, no. Uh, What happened? Yep. So I went out on the porch and about a big, hairy spider about that big of a body (laughs) was on our porch. I don't know what you were going to. I don't know where you were going with that. (laughs) So I uh, took care of it, smashed it with my foot. Uh, I, I sac. I mean, some people might call me a hero. I don't really like to put labels on things, but uh, I did what I needed to do. Well, you got to be careful when you're squishing spiders because sometimes they're carrying eggs. And uh, <laughs> oh. I, I've been told that many times. Do not careful when you're squishing spiders. You don't want to. Okay. I, st- I wish I would have thought about it to take a picture to try to then identify the species, but I was yeah. too caught up. I, in you know, lucky I mean, I haven't come across too many spiders lately. So uh, sure. I'm happy about that. But anyway, we're here talking week three. Man, week two was crazy. I feel exhausted from week two. Like, we fantasy football has just been crazy. Um, a lot of stuff has been happening, injuries. So uh, be on the lookout. If you have a question mark on your guy, just stay tuned and and, and figure out what's going on with that. Uh, pay attention to his practice schedule and, and whatnot. I mean, we just saw who a- – A.J. Brown with a hand injury. Is that what you said? Right no, uh, Metcalf. D.K. Metcalf. Oh, Metcalf. practice yeah. on Wednesday with a hand injury that just popped out of nowhere. Yeah, so uh, guys, we got to check our lineups every day now. All right, we got to check them every single day, not just Thursdays before the game uh, and Tuesdays before waivers. So, um, anyway, we're going to talk some red light quarterbacks. Shane, are you are you ready to go with some uh, red yeah, light quarterbacks? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, yep. let's do it. What who you got? Uh, so my first one is going to be, and I I'm going to preface this real quick by saying it's was hard. It's been hard to find like red light quarterbacks that people may be starting based off of injuries and just poor performances. So my first guy, I'm actually, he's like one of my two quarterbacks. And so I've been, I started him last week. So that's why I'm including him. And that's Matthew Stafford. I mean, I lost Jordan Love. Stafford was my backup. I was forced to start him last week. Um, I am very, very concerned. Like his offensive line is just decimated. Now he's lost Nakua and Cup. Um, he's back at home, but he's playing uh, against a San Francisco defense that, like, when you look at their stats, like, he sh- if he was had his normal set of weapons, like, it's pretty good. Like, they're bottom 10 in passing yards allowed per game. Um, they're averaging, like, two passing touchdowns allowed per game. But I just think they'll come down and just shut Stafford down. I'm, I'm picking up guys. I picked up Gardner Minshew to start over him this week. Yeah, Stafford's on my list, man. Anytime you lose your two best wide receivers, it's just not going to bode well for you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I know everybody's picking up Demarcus uh, uh, Robinson and and uh, Tyler Johnson. Who's the third one? Jordan Whittingham. Yeah, Whittingham. You know, yeah. Um, you know, maybe they have good games. I don't know, but I, I'm I'm not liking Stafford this week either. So no. I can get on board with that. Um, did you have any other ones? Uh, and then the other one is similar boat is Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I just, I hate what I've seen there. I mean, the first, you know, I think he's only got one passing touchdown in his first two games. Um, I don't think he's a clip more than 13 fantasy points. Um, this is in Buffalo. I think Buffalo will play much tougher at home. Uh, I don't see him getting past one touch, one passing touchdown max. Yeah, I mean, you heard him in the press conference. He's like, "We just we suck." We suck. You know I mean? the, the fact that he said that in a press conference is pretty comical. But um, yeah, I have both of them on my list as well. Stafford and Lawrence are not looking good this week. Uh, hopefully, it turns around for Lawrence. Uh, you know, I I want to see him do well in the league, but it just hasn't really happened. I mean, how many years are we going to wait for Justin Lawrence or Trevor Lawrence to, you know, pop off? But. Yeah. I digress. Anyway, my my red light quarterback, uh, along with Stafford and Lawrence, is Justin Herbert. 
Justin Herbert, mm-hmm. uh, dealt with a leg injury in week two. He's on pace to play. We'll see. If he does play, you don't want to start him. He's going against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. I, I'm pretty sure I don't. he hasn't thrown for over 145 yards in either of the two games. This new Harbaugh offense is, is run-focused. You know, he, he was able to get Quinton Johnson involved uh, last week, which is good to see. But Pittsburgh is tough, man. Uh, they haven't really played a prolific quarterback. They, uh, they played Kirk Cousins and uh, Bo Nix. So, you know, not really on the level that Justin Herbert's on. But this Steelers defense is the real deal. And uh, I, I, I don't want any part of Justin Herbert going against them. No, he's got – I think it's an ankle injury. So if he plays, which I think he'll tough it out and play, but he's going to be limited with mobility-wise. Like this feels like a multi-sack game for T.J. Watt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which I, I, I still think he's going to win defense player of the year. He's oh, so Oh, for good. sure. Yeah. He's just dominant at, at yeah. this point. And uh, he's uh, the MVP for the Steelers, definitely, yeah. I think. Yeah. But. All right, well, let's jump into green light quarterbacks. Who you, who you pressing the gas on this week? Who do you want in your lineup in every league? Oh, man, it is. I think this is week consensus across you and anybody else, but it's a big bounce back week for Joe Burrow. I mean, yeah. let's just – it's the automatic. Yeah. Like, anytime you've got a quarterback facing the commanders who, you know, allowed the most fantasy points, and, like, even going back to last year, like, they've allowed, like, the most passing touchdowns in the league – um, it's just a easy layup for your quarterback to bounce back. Yeah, I, I he's guess what? He's on my list as well. Okay, yeah. Joe Burrow is uh, this is his week. He's you know, week one was rough, scored like eight famous points, week two scored more points against uh, uh, Kansas City. He had a much better game. Um, but I think week three, he really turns it on this week. So uh, if I have Joe Burrow starting him with confidence, um, and uh, I'm feeling great about that. So um, my green light quarterback, uh, I have a couple and they're, uh, you know, I don't know if they're obvious, but J- Jared Goff, uh, at Arizona or versus Air- or I think he's in, that's in Arizona. In Arizona. Right? Yeah. Yeah. In Arizona. Um, we know that road golf sometimes doesn't play well, but I think Jared Goff is going to th- play really well against Arizona. Arizona hasn't, their defense hasn't really been that great. And, uh, Goff, he's just got weapons galore. So I, I have a league where, you know, last week I was talking about, I have Caleb Williams. He was on my red light uh, list last week. I, and I still haven't found like a good replacement for him. I'm going with Goff this week. I picked him up off the waiver wire and he's going in my lineup. So uh, I'm pretty happy about that. And then the other guys in that uh, Cincinnati Washington game, Jaden Daniels, uh, we saw him kind of have a down week last week. They didn't score any touchdowns, but I think he finds the end zone this week. Uh, Cincinnati's defense hasn't really lived up to their uh, to their standards, so to speak. So I, I like Daniels and I like Goff this week. Yeah, I'd really like to see Daniels like get something going passing wise as far as touchdowns and some down the field looks for Scary Terry. That would be that's what we need to see. Yeah, and and also check your check your waiver wire if Derek Carr and and Baker Mayfield are on your waiver wire. Oh my gosh, pick them up. Okay, yeah. this is like I understand their names aren't sexy from previous years, but this is the number one quarterback, the number two quarterback we're talking yes. about right now at this I mean, point in the league. Pick them up. Pick them up. Yeah, yeah there. I I have a league where they're just sitting on the wire, and I'm like, all right, well, I I gotta pick them up. Like this is even though I don't really have room for them on my roster, yeah. like they shouldn't be there. So, yeah, if, if Carr and Baker are sitting there, those guys are great starts this week as well. Maybe yeah. even a little DFS action. You know. Um. All right. Well, let's uh, talk about some red light <clears throat> running backs. Shane, who's gonna have bad weeks this week? Uh, I think this is finally when we see the bad game from J.K. Dobbins. Uh, In Pittsburgh, uh, they're allowing the fourth fewest rushing yards per game. Um, They haven't given up a rushing touchdown all season. Uh, We talked about it. If Herbert plays, he's going to be limited. I don't think the Chargers probably get more than 10, 13 points in this game. Um, I just think they – they will shut him down in this game. Yeah, you know, he's got to come back down to earth eventually, right? Back-to-back games with over 130 rushing yards is just not sustainable. And when you're going against Pittsburgh's defense, it's just this, you know, it's one of the defenses I'm circling every week mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, I don't want anybody playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. I don't want anybody playing against the Cleveland Browns. You know, even the Baltimore Ravens are like that too, where it's like these defenses are so elite 
that um, the guys are going to struggle against him. So yeah. um, could could he have a big game? Sure, he could break a, a seventy yard run on a broken play, but the rest of the game isn't going to look great. You know what I mean? No. So yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, my guy, uh, you know, I got a couple of them I'll mention here, and then the main one at the end. But Singletary at Cleveland, I yeah. talked about it. Cleveland's defense is really good. Singletary had a good game last week, but um, Giants are going to struggle in this game against Cleveland. So mm-hmm. I, you know. Um, start your Malik neighbors, of course, but uh, outside of that stuff, uh, Javante Williams at Tampa Bay. We already talked about it last week. This uh, Denver backfield is 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 terrible right now between him and J- uh, Jaleel McLaughlin. So uh, definitely keep Javante on the bench. And Najee Harris. Uh, I don't like Najee Harris against uh, the Los Angeles Chargers. And lastly, and most importantly, it's Aaron Jones uh, versus Houston. Yeah, yeah. I like Aaron Jones. Like, pay it, like. Uh, I picked him up on a league. Ty Chandler is kind of outproducing him on running the ball. So. Yeah, he, yeah, he, Ty Chandler was the leading rusher last game. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm just, I, I'm worried about Aaron Jones taking on Houston's defense, which seems to be a, a top tier defense right now at this point in the league. So, um, yeah. yeah, I'm definitely worried about those guys. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, what do you got for green light running backs? Shane O'Mac. Uh, I'm going to get the obvious one out of the way. I think most people are starting him, but still, like Jordan Mason, uh, nobody's got more <laughs> rush attempts through two games. But, I mean, there there could be scenarios out there because he was drafted so late where, you well, know. Picked maybe up off got, the waiver wire. Yeah, right, pay, or picked up off the waiver wire. So yeah. maybe you've got two decent guys, but there's not very many people I would bench for Mason. Um, just he's getting – all of the volume. It's like Kyron Williams from last year, volume wise. Um, so he's he's in for a big game. Uh, and then I like I like Zach uh, Charbonnet in playing against the Dolphins. Uh, he got all of the rushing attempts last year. Uh, I expect Walker out again this uh, this week. Dolphins were fifth or sixth as far as most fantasy points given to running backs. We just saw James Cook like shred them to pieces last Thursday night. So I think they are up in this game in the second half and he gets more. I think he got like 13 or 14 rush attempts last week. He's probably closer to 20 this week. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can get behind that. He's on my list a little bit lower on the list, but I I completely agree. Um, Charbonnet is going to eat this week. Um, My green light running backs. I I got two of them here, but I want to talk about Brian Robinson and Tony Pollard. Uh, Brian Robinson at Cincinnati. Uh, we saw what he did last week. He had over what over 130 yards rushing right. last week. Uh, I, I think this game is going to be really good. I, I I've been saying that about this Washington Commanders team week one, week two, now week three, where I expect it to be pretty high scoring, and I, I think Brian Robinson is going to be a beneficiary of that. And Tony Pollard, he just continues to um, assert himself in this offense, in in a struggling Tennessee offense, as a matter of fact. But I mean, 19 total touches in week one and two. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you got a running back that's going to get close to 20 touches a game, Tony Pollard's that guy. He should be flexed or RB2 locked in, in my opinion. Yep. There's one guy I forgot to mention, and I, and I want to mention him um, just because. Shane O'Mac, okay. shocker of the week. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. I uh, I think the shocker of the week and nobody's going to start him. He'll probably be started in less than 20% of the leagues. But it's going to be Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard. I think Hubbard. we are looking at a rebound for this Carolina offense uh, with the insertion of the red rifle, Andy Dalton. Uh, in that offense, I think he moves the ball better, Uh the Raiders give up over 160 rushing yards a game. I think this is a sneaky close game that most people aren't going to think is going to be. And if that's the that. case, if that's the case, Hubbard's going to get volume. I, I like that a lot, Shane. I like that a lot. Yeah. Chuba Hubbard, everyone's kind of left him for dead. He's sitting out there in the waiver wire in most leagues. Yeah. Um, but no, you're right. Uh, the Red Rocket, uh, Andy Dalton, could e- breathe some life into this team. This is the matchup to do it. You know what I mean? I, I, I agree with everything you said there. I, I think 
Chuba Hubbard could be a nice play this week. Maybe a, a sneaky flex. Yeah. The shocker of the week. I like it. I like yeah. it. Good, good pull there, Shane. Good <laughs> pull. All right. Um, all right. Let's jump over to red light wide receivers. Um, I have a lot of red light wide receivers on my list. So, um, you know, you know, there's a couple, a couple of them are pretty simple. A couple of them are a little bit more complicated and a couple of them are like just blatantly obvious. Um, Michael Pittman, Michael Pittman is just panic button all day mm-hmm. right now. Alec Pierce has been the leading wide receiver on the team. Um, yeah. a- uh, Anthony Richardson struggled last week. You know, I just, I, if I have Pittman, I'm freaking out right now. I, I don't want to start him. Um, and uh, I mean, Chicago's defense is uh, pretty good in the passing attack. So um, I, I think he'll get locked up all game by Jalen Johnson and uh, not a fan of Pittman. Uh, Jalen Waddle, obviously don't I like I understand Jalen Waddle is such a prolific piece to people's lineups, mm-hmm. but you can't trust him this week. It, it's You're better off sitting him until I mean to it went on the IR, right? So we don't know what's going on with this Miami offense, but you can't start him with confidence. You can't start him, in my opinion. But uh, And then Quentin Johnston. Last week, Quentin Johnston scored a couple touchdowns. We saw, you know, he's probably a popular pickup on waiver wires, right? But when – pick him up, put him on your bench. Do not start him this week. Uh, I think this is just a recipe for disaster this week. So um, Christian Kirk, we, we talked about Christian Kirk in the reactions episode. I hope I'm not ruining some of these names for you, Shane, because I, I, you might have some of these on your list, but Christian Kirk, uh, just this, you know, we talked about Trevor Lawrence being on the red light. This kind of ties in with that Buffalo's mm-hmm. defense is really good. They've been, they've been really good over the last two weeks. So I'm, I'm a little worried about that. Uh, and then McLaurin, Terry McLaurin, it hurts my heart. But you just can't start him right now. I do like this game. I think against Cincinnati, this could be a game where he shines. But we just haven't seen it yet. So you just, if you can, if you can start someone else, start someone else. We'll mention those in a little bit. Uh, and then the last one, uh, Mike Evans. Mike Evans is going to get locked up by Patrick Sertain. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to continue to be a Godwin week, uh, which we've seen after week one and two. Just monster weeks uh great production from godwin so i'm afraid of mike evans and this is going to be a guy that it's going to be really hard not to start mike evans i get that but you know evans has these games where he scores three fantasy points four fantasy points mm-hmm. so i'm afraid this week is one of those weeks yeah well all i have to say for mine is, i li- we literally had the exact same five <laughs> Wide receiver. So everyone, if you're listening to this, get these guys out of your lineup this week. Because I literally had every you're single kidding. the same guy hit upon. Uh, I mean, yes, Waddle's the obvious. Uh, you know, the thing about Pittman, like Josh Downs is going to be back playing. So that's even that's one more person to compete with targets for him. Uh, scary Terry. I like, he's been the most targeted, you know, receiver, but he's getting no yardage from those targets. There's no down the field. Uh, the Bengals are pretty tough against the pass. I had the same comment on you about Evans, like certain being locked up on him. I hate that. Like he's one of the best, like him and certain and, and Gonzalez from new England are probably guys we, we got to pay attention to each week. Yeah. Gonzalez is, is really climbing up the ranks for yeah. sure. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just not great. Not great for these wide receivers. But tell me who it is great for. Who do you like this week? I'm wondering if we have the other, if we can boom shakalaka the green light. So you go ahead, you fire him off. What do you got? I have two that I think we'll probably agree on and one that we probably won't. So the first two are, the first one I've got is Zay Flowers. Uh, We just saw that Dallas defense give up over 240 receiving yards to the Saints receivers. Uh, this is, you know, uh, going to be in Dallas, which is not a concern. Um, my only slight concern would be if Baltimore gets up and leans on the run because Dallas struggles against the run. But I love the target volume for Flowers. I think he has a smash day. I think DJ Moore smashes against a bottom five defense in the Colts of against wide receivers um and then my not so obvious play and 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 i don't have i can't give you any of these fantasy points allowed to or receiving yards allowed i literally don't have stats to back this up but it is just a feeling i've got that xavier worthy playing sunday night 
in Atlanta on that fast turf, like I feel like a big play, 50, 60 yard touchdown play is going to come Sunday night from Mahomes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Zay Flowers is on my list. DJ Moore is on my list. Um, I do not have your third guy on my list. Yeah, but, that's what I figured. Yeah, I do not have him on my list. But um, I, I can I can mention a couple more. Um, I really like uh, George Pickens this week mm-hmm. uh, against the Chargers. You know, Pickens kind of had a, uh, a tough match at week two, getting locked up by Sertain. But I, I think this week against the Chargers, it, it'll be much more of a favorable matchup for him. I think he's worth starting in, in some leagues. Um, and uh, obviously, Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams through two weeks. I think he had 14 fantasy points in each week. He has over two weeks. He has uh, tw- 20 targets, 10 receptions, 200 yards, and a touchdown. The guy is just a main target right now for Jared Goff. And even in a game where we saw Amon Ra have like 11, 11 receptions or whatever the number was, but I, I really like Jamison Williams. He's a lock in lineups. And then the other guy is Rashid Shahid. Rashid Shahid, after the performance he put on the first two weeks, the Saints looked like the best team in football. You know, at, at any point in the game, he could catch a 60-yard touchdown yep. at any point in the game. So somebody with that much upside, with that much explosiveness, that much quickness and, and a, a elite athleticism, I, I want him in my lineup. So he's climbing up my ranks pretty far. I think it, we might uh, release a, uh, a rest-of-season rankings after – I think for week four we we're talking about or something yeah. like that. But, um, yeah, he's climbing up my ranks, man. Rashid Shahid is just is so much fun to watch. He's mm-hmm. he's really good. So yeah. I, I want him, J-Mo, Pickens, Zay, DJ Moore. And then, I mean, some obvious ones. Marvin Harrison after the week he had. He's a lock for DFS. Chris Olave. Even Brandon Ayuk with Debo Samuel possibly being yeah. out. I think Ayuk could be a great DFS play. So a um, yeah. couple guys at the end, obviously, that those are, those are no-brainers. But – yeah, that's, those are my green light wide receivers of the week. And one thing I want to mention on Pickens to everybody, because I almost put him on my list also, is two things. So, like, if you're one of those people that are that look at, like, oh, what's the matchup? You know, you're going to see Chargers give up the second fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. But remember, A, they played the Raiders, then they played the Panthers. So there's that. <laughs> and then B, like, uh, Pickens had two monster – receptions called back in that Denver game for very questionable holding calls. Uh, and that was when Sertain was locked up on him. He's still bidding for long catches. Or, so his day would have looked much, much better. Uh, I'm not concerned about this matchup. I think Fields will lock in on him. And you'll see, I think, a similar stat line to what we saw against Atlanta in week one. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I am I think Fields is playing good football, right? You know, I, he's – Two and zero with the Steelers, is isn't throwing for many yards, but he's he's not turning the ball over. I think this is a chance for him to like really uh, showcase his arm ability in this game. So that's yeah. why I like Pickens and uh, I'll be I think I'll be picking the Pittsburgh Steelers to go three and zero this week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Anyway, let's move on to tight ends. Uh, Shane, who's your red light tight end of the week? <sighs> this one pains me to see because. Uh, to, to admit to because I drafted him in multiple leagues and I drafted him pretty high in multiple leagues. I think it's the same it's, guy on my list. Yeah, it's Dalton Kincaid. Like for me, until I can see it, he's going on my list each week. And, you know, as much as we think that uh, Jacksonville is going to struggle, they still like they're in the top three and fewest fantasy points allowed to tight ends. Um, this could be a game similar to the first three quarters in Miami where Buffalo gets up to a good lead and they don't have to throw the ball. And Josh Allen's not throwing the ball a bunch, which was the case at, you know, when they went to Miami last week. So that's my concern with Kincaid. Yeah. I, he's written down on my list as well. And uh, I just, it, it hurts because Kincaid had so much so much potential he still does and i I think he's going to figure it out and be the main guy but he's definitely not living up to the hype of the offseason that's for sure uh another guy on my list i know i just talked about pickens and 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 fields uh you know showcasing his arm ability but pat fryermuth it's just not happening for him you know last week we saw an uptick in his production and it still didn't amount to much you know he's one of these guys that's like you know he'll get you the six seven points but there is zero upside in pat fryermuth so 
um, I'm looking elsewhere if I got the muth in my line. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Who you got for green light? Who's your green light tight end for this week? Uh, I'm going with the person that you have hated since day one of the off season. Um, and that's George Kittle. <laughs> Your disdain right, for him has right, been duly right. noted on all previous right. shows. So I, I love I love George Kittle. Okay, I just want that to be known. <laughs> I just didn't like drafting George Kittle in uh, fantasy football. But go ahead. Talk, I think the talk, formula talk. is easy, right? When he when there's no Ayuk or no Debo, like he thrives. So it doesn't really take a genius to figure this out. Like he's gonna put up some huge catch volume um, this week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it makes sense, you know, and I'm definitely eating my words in the beginning of the season, not drafting George Kittle and talking so ill of him in draft during that season. But yeah, anytime Debo or Ayuk missed time, you know, Kittle's mm -hmm. uh, a main target. Even We saw it last week, even with Debo and Ayuk in the lineup and getting targets, Kittle was a main, main piece. So yeah, you, you're right. I that was wrong of me to say during draft season not to draft George <laughs> Kittle. So, uh, uh, you know, bad on me. Um, all right, my green light quarter, my green light tight end of this week is Kyle Pitts. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand. You know, he got a touchdown a week one. Week two wasn't really much. He's taking on Kansas City this week. This is a big game for Atlanta. I just I, I have an inkling that Pitts is going to get it done this week. He's going to find the end zone. He's going to have good production. Uh, I'm just not very confident in this pick, but I, I have a feeling, an inkling, like I said. Um, Kansas City, we saw them get absolutely torched by Isaiah Likely. Um, right now they're giving up the most uh, receiving yards. Um, you know, it's just it, it seems like a good matchup on paper. We'll see how it, how it unfolds, but uh, Kyle Pitts is, is my pick, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> No, I like it. for, And then, you know, besides the matchup for the Chiefs, you know, like you said, like, I feel like this should be either a high scoring game or a game where Atlanta's down and throwing a bunch in the second half, third or fourth quarter. It's one of the two. You're going to get one of those two scenarios. So, yeah, yeah, I completely agree. All right. Well, that has been our red light, green light for week three. Follow us on Twitter. Check out uh, all of our uh, Substack material, the fantasyroadshow.substack.com. You guys are the best. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, most importantly, buckle up. Buckle up.